Excuse me, little dog. Hi, guys. Well, this is the single ugliest, nastiest, most depressing midwinter day yet that I have spent in the year 2023. Uh, eight days from heading out of bugs in a jar, although they say it's going to be in the 70s here in a couple of days if I can make it through Sunday, October 22nd, 2023, and unbelievably, I have these clueless morons coming to bugs in a jar today. I have done everything I can to beg these idiots to cancel. They absolutely refuse. They are going through with it. So, uh, <laughs> while Sancho and I sit around awaiting our vacation rental guest, I'm going to do what I do every day. But this is Sunday, so we're going to have just a short uh, sort of doomsday sermon, I guess, from uh, author Daniel Quinn. Uh, you might have probably, if you know the name Daniel Quinn, is his excellent op, uh, novel called Ishmael about that gorilla. Although, actually, Daniel has written quite a few fine books. But I found this uh, excerpt from Daniel... <clears throat> on medium.com uh, being shared by a fellow there called Climate Survivor. Climate Survivor. I hope I can survive this climate for one damn day before heading back to Florida for the winter. And so this talk uh, was from 19... 1993. So we're going to go back 30 years and see what was on the minds of uh, Daniel Ishmael Quinn 30 years ago. And as Climate Survivor pointed out, this has nothing to do with the little kerfuffle going on over there in uh, Gaza. Nothing whatsoever. This was written 30 years ago. And we will let Daniel Ishmael Quinn take it from here. <clears throat> and he was talking the subject of his speech. This is not his entire speech, apparently. This is part of it was on investments. <clears throat> Take it away, Daniel Quinn. During the Second World War, the people of Germany invested heavily in a secret plan. This plan was so secret that many Germans managed to keep it a secret, even from themselves. Except in the highest military and political circles, the plan was never discussed at all. And when it was discussed in high circles, it was discussed in a veiled way, in a sort of code. Everyone knew the plan to some extent, though some, as I say, managed to close their eyes to it, managed to see no evil, hear no evil, and speak no evil. The plan I'm talking about was, of course, the plan to rid the world of the Jewish race. Okay, Daniel, Jews are not a race. They are a religion. But anyway, uh, I will shut up. Although exterminating the Jews was one of Hitler's manias, it was not his mania exclusively. Not at all. 
though many of them like to remain silent about it, the people of Germany were, on the whole, behind Hitler in his ambition to rid the world of Jews. They invested a lot in this secret plan. They invested their consciences. I guess conscience can have a plural. They invested their consciences. They invested their place among the family of nations. They invested all of their self-respect. They invested these things not only for themselves, but for their children as well. Well, as we all know now, the secret plan failed and the German people lost their investment. They lost an incredible amount. They and their children, and indeed their children's children, they are still paying off their losses for this dreadfully bad investment. The people of our culture, you know, and this is 30 years ago, in general, are also investing heavily in a secret plan today. When I say our culture, I mean the people of the developed world, the people of the technologically advanced first world nations. I mean us. And of course, I mean the people in this room. <clears throat> we have a secret plan that is never discussed openly at all. Someday, perhaps, we will know whether it is discussed at the highest political levels and whether it's discussed in code or in plain. We don't teach our children this plan, but they know all about it by the time they reach mid-school. Courting couples don't discuss the plan to see if they're in, in agreement on it. It is the plan. It's there in place and we are investing everything we have in it. We are investing our future, which would be now. We are investing our future in it, our children's future in it, for generations to come. Well, we'll see. We may actually be investing the future of the human race itself in this plan. The Nazi plan to exterminate the Jews was a shameful plan, and this is why it was kept secret. This is also why our plan is kept secret. It too is shameful, and we all know it. Our secret plan is this. We are going to go on consuming the world until there is no more to consume. This does not preclude us consuming it wisely or consuming it as slowly as possible. It doesn't preclude supporting every conceivable conservation initiative. It does not preclude support, supporting every conceivable means of recycling. We are going to recycle. We're going to conserve. But we're also going to go on consuming until there is no more to consume. We don't know when it will all be gone. We don't want to know, just as the people of Germany 
did not want to know what happened to their Jewish neighbors when the Gestapo carried them away. One thing we do know, however, it won't happen in our lifetimes. It probably won't happen in our children's lifetime. You know, the lifetimes 30 years later. It may not even happen in our grandchildren's lifetimes. So, it's really all right, we feel, to invest in this secret plan. Goodness, just think how much we are investing in it. The German investment in the final solution was negligible compared to the investment we are making in consuming the world, otherwise known as planet eating. I hope no one will think I am speaking in a self-righteous or condemnatory fat vein here. Back home in Austin, Texas, I did not know Daniel Quinn lived in Austin, Texas. Back home in Austin, I have a Subaru Legacy. It runs on Super Unleaded. We run two computers, two printers, all sorts of electronic equipment, chock full of non-renewable resources. God, we just bought a CD player and tape duplicating equipment. You can really tell we're so 20th century. A CD player and tape duplicating equipment. There's probably nobody on this planet under the age of 40 who has any clue what that sentence means. My point is not at all to make you feel guilty. What I'm proposing is that it is important for us to begin to bring the plan out into the open for a change. I'll tell you one reason why. When the people of the world finally understood the tremendous effort that the people of Germany had put into slaughtering Jews and gypsies and the physically and mentally handicapped, they said to themselves, my God, what kind of monsters were these people? If we continue to pursue our plan to consume the world until there is no more to consume, then there's going to come a day, sure as hell, when our children, or their children, or their children's children, are going to look back on us, on you and me, and say to themselves, my God, what kind of monsters were these people? This is an idea that doesn't appeal to me at all. In view of the fact that you are here at this gathering, I have to assume that it doesn't appeal to you either. If I were addressing the greed is good club, I'd have to take a different approach. When the Germans of Hitler's era saw their neighbors being marched off at gunpoint, they knew perfectly well that these people were not headed for picnics in the Black Forest. They knew what was going on and were silent. And this, in part, is what makes them look like monsters to us. And if you are like me and would like to avoid looking like monsters to your grandchildren, then I suggest you stop being silent about our plan to go on consuming in the world, go on consuming the world until there simply is not any more there to 
consume. So it sounds like Daniel Quinn had planet eaters on his mind. Uh, uh, Tennessee Jed, sounding a little bit like me. I am a monster, and I didn't know it until it was too late to do a thing. Yes. Uh, I'm sure that this fellow, uh, Sam Mitchell, had, uh, had one had something to say about this. This is Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles, weighing in on uh, <clears throat> that speech. All I have to worry about is looking at the monster in the mirror, because I won't have any grandchildren, for the simple reason that I did not have any children. For the simple reason, I got myself sterilized at age 22 before letting any of these new planted nibbling carbon copies of myself out of the bag. Once I have bought my coffin, my consuming buck stops here. Enjoy your monster guilt, breeders. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, th this is the ultimate divide between breeders and non-breeders. Right there. I assume this monster, this planet-eating monster, is going to make it out of here with a screen door. Just hitting me on my guilty ass. But uh, once my guilty ass has been booted out the door, the consuming buck stops here. This is uh, why I say... Uh, if the CEO of Exxon is a non-breeder and the, whatever you call it, the CEO of, I don't know, the Wilderness Society maybe has one child, guess which one has caused more damage to this planet? A person who is never born consumes exactly nothing in their non-lifetime and has an ecological carbon footprint of exactly zero. There is one way to have a non-consuming ecological footprint of zero that is never to be born. This is real rocket science, but it seems like only non-breeders understand the sentence, the only way to have an ecological footprint of zero is to never be born. But anyway, once again, I am talking to myself, bouncing off the walls of my seven foot by seven foot little solitary confinement prison while well, sharing it with my little dog. But I need to get out there and get ready to play super host to these people coming in on the single most miserable day of the year while they still can. Bye guys.